All right, folks, it's Bass Action back in action here. In this video, we are going to look at uh, two major things. The first being converting back and forth between degrees and radians. And then the second one is just a background idea that will help with making some bigger connections later in the chapter, and that's about coterminal angles and reference angles. Okay, so let's start here at the top with example one and looking at the converting between uh, degrees and radians. Now, in the previous video, we noted the fact that half the circle is pi radians, and it's also 180 degrees. That link, that equivalency, is going to help us create a simple proportion for converting back and forth. And although there are multiple ways to do this, when we get to our example B, you'll see why this is an important way to um, set these problems up. So I like to do these with a simple proportion, okay? which means every conversion problem is gonna start out the same. We're gonna have a proportion, and what we know links these two is that the pi radians is the same as 180 degrees. Now in this problem, we're converting from degrees to radians, so we're gonna go ahead and put our degrees here and our radians there that we're solving for. Then of course we can do a quick reducing on that right hand side. We can even do that cross multiplying probably in our head. Okay, so um, I'm gonna go ahead and write it down, but you might even be able to jump to the solution very quickly here. Um, if we go ahead and write it down, what we'll have here is our 18x equals our five pi. Then solving, we get our five pi over 18, and that's going to be our radians. Now. We're going to be doing almost everything in these um, first couple chapters of this semester without a calculator. So if we're thinking, how could we check this and make sure it makes sense? Remember, pi is about 3.14, so let's just call it 3. So 5 times 3 is 15. 15 over 8 is something a little bit less than 1. And if we're thinking to those mental images on the previous page, 50 degrees should be a little bit before that first dot. So that conversion makes sense to us. Now, this next problem, you'll notice that when I wrote this problem, this 3 8 radians, you'll notice that there's not a pi in there. So don't assume that there is a pi. This is 3 8 radians, which means our 3 divided by our 8, okay, if we're thinking about that, is less than a half. So it's less than 0.5, which means our degrees is going should be something less than 30 degrees. But let's go ahead and set this up because we're going to look at how to set this up without a calculator and how an exact answer would look. Remember, pi radians is the same as 180 degrees. We're given radians, so we're going to put that on the radian side. We'll put our x here. Now, when we cross multiply this, this might look weird to some of you, and that's okay. We're going to have an x pi. And then when we cross multiply the other side, we'll have our 3 8 using horizontal fraction bars is gonna be really important for us. We're gonna have our 180 over one. And if you get kind of stumped on how to divide it, just start thinking dividing by two. Okay, so if you have to, go ahead and divide by two first if you're not thinking. So you could maybe take this down to a 90 and take this down to a four and go, oh yeah, I could reduce that again and get that down to a 45 and get that down to a two. Okay, it doesn't matter if you have to do it a couple times, no big deal. That means that when we solve for this, that pi that's on the left hand side, we're going to think multiplying both sides by the one over pi. So our answer is going to be our three times our 45, which we can do in our head pretty easily. Maybe even thinking like three times 50. A um, couple ways we can break that down, but that's going to get us down to a 135 in the numerator, and the denominator will still have that 2, and then we have that pi from the other side. And you can go ahead and just leave this like this. Now, if you had a calculator handy, you could go ahead and you could type that into your calculator. You could think, let's say, 135 maybe divided by a 6 if you're trying to approximate it. Um, but you, what you want to be thinking is that you should be getting something that's a little bit less than 30 degrees. Okay, now that's just a quick little conversion. That's more of an algebra exercise. On these problems down here, though, we want to start to approximate um, and 
figure out where our angles might land, okay? So you're gonna be asked to do several things. We want to be able to sketch an angle. We wanna be able to determine what quadrant it should land in. We also wanna figure out coterminal angles. We talked about those in the very first video, okay? And when we talk about positive and negative, we in general wanna think about the ones that are closest to zero, okay? The smallest positive, smallest negative as it hovers around zero. And then also this idea of a reference angle. So we're gonna look at a whole bunch of things on this. Now, this first problem that I want you to take a look at and is the fact that we've got this denominator of a 15. And this is the part that gets kind of weird for students. I'll fill in that box in just a moment, that reference angle. I'll come back to that here in a second. The first thing that we wanna think about is how we can approximate this because this denominator of 15 is not one of those nice denominators that we had from that previous video, those key reference ones. This one's something kind of weird, but what we can go back to is that idea that I had there that said half the circle was pi and the whole circle was two pi. So if we rewrite this problem in terms of a denominator of 15, instead of half the circle being pi, we can think of that in terms of our denominator and think of it as 15 pi over 15, which of course would reduce to pi, okay? That means that the whole circle then is going to be 30 pi over 15. That's gonna be helpful for us because now we can start thinking about this top and this bottom. If the half the circle was 15 pi, then going only a fourth of the circle, it should be half of that. And this is gonna kind of violate most of my rules of fractions, but we're going to think half of 15 is 7.5. So this is going to be 7.5 pi over 15. Now we know that this is 7.5 pi over 15. This was another seven and a half. This is going to be another seven and a half, which makes this one down here 22.5 pi over 15, which allows us to land here at the other side. So what I want you to notice is that a whole rotation is 30 pi over 15, but we're looking at an angle here of 50 pi, 56 pi over 15. That means that there's an extra rotation, an extra spin on this angle. So what we're gonna do right off the bat, I'm gonna slide this up just a little bit more, is we're going to start subtracting some full rotations to figure out what should this angle really look like if it's smaller, okay? So if we have this 56 pi over 15 and I subtract a whole rotation, okay, that's gonna get us down to a 26 pi over 15. That is going to be our first coterminal angle because I can see that that's now less than a full rotation, which means we're gonna count this as a positive coterminal angle. That also is gonna allow us to graph this angle or sketch it because 26 pi, as so I'm thinking about rotating around, 26 pi is gonna be past the 22.5 and is gonna land somewhere in this quadrant. Now I don't actually care where it is. What matters to me is that I understand that it's in this quadrant right here, okay? So that's gonna be our 26 pi over 15, somewhere in that quadrant. Don't worry about it being to scale. And then what we also can do if we subtract a whole rotation one more time, so if I took this 26 uh, pi over 15 and I subtracted another 30 pi over 15, I will now move into the negatives and that will get me a negative coterminal angle. That's going to land me at a negative 4 pi over 15. So when it is thinking about coterminal angles, both of those would be coterminal angles. The last thing that we're going to do um, is we're going to think about a reference angle. And when I think about that reference angle, this is where we're going to fill in that box up here. Reference angles are always expressed. Oops. I think I do that in about every third video. Sorry about that. Okay, they're going to be expressed always. Okay, always, always, always expressed as a positive number. 
values. They will always be expressed as a positive value and they will always be formed by the terminal side. Remember from the very first video, that's the rotation, the terminal side, and, and this is really important, the x-axis, okay? So if we highlight this, what we're going to see is that our reference angle is formed by this terminal side and the x-axis. So what we're thinking about is how many more radians are between the 26 pi over 15 and the 30 pi over 15. So we're just thinking we've rotated around 26 pi over 15. How much more should we go? Oh, we're going to go another four pi over 15. This is gonna be a really important idea later. The last thing that I did forget to mention here is the numbering of the quadrants. We have quadrant one, two, three, and four, okay? You might up till now have wondered why they are numbered in this counterclockwise order, but from the very first video when we talked about rotations of angles, they, the numbering follows the way we rotate our angles in a positive direction. So our angle lands in the fourth quadrant and its reference angle is four pi over 15. Let's do one more here. Um, we'll take a look at this negative 13 pi. This one will go a little bit faster for us. So let's go ahead and think about this as a negative direction. So I always like to sketch these in first. Now, since this one's going in a negative direction, I'm gonna actually number the left and the right-hand side in terms of negative numbers. This might help you. So instead of numbering this, remember this is a pi and this is a two pi, but we're gonna think negative pi and negative two pi. So I'm gonna think of this as a negative 12 pi over 12, and I'm gonna think of this as a negative 24 pi over 12, which means as I'm rotating in that negative direction, this becomes my negative six pi over 12 because it was half of this. And so then I've got a negative six. This gets me to a negative 12. This gets me to a negative 18, negative 18 pi over 12. Sometimes just labeling those negatives will help us in terms of this rotation. So a negative 13 pi over 12, when I'm thinking about rotating this, that means that it's rotated a negative 12 pi over 12 and then went a little bit more, so it should be between here and here. So I can sketch this one in, which means I can clearly see that it lands in the second quadrant, okay? Then we can think about the reference angle. So the reference angle, remember, must be formed between this terminal side and the x-axis. So what we're asking ourselves is how much did it go past there? So it went one pi over 12 past that, that 12 pi, past that halfway, and we're gonna express it as a positive. So this reference angle is a pi over 12. Okay. Then when we think about coterminal angles, what we're going to think about is adding some angles to this, adding whole rotations. So we're going to take this negative 13 pi over 12. We're gonna to add to that a whole rotation, but we're thinking positive, okay? So we're gonna, because we need to get this negative number into a positive category here. So we're gonna add this 24 pi over 12. When I do that, that's going to get me to an 11 pi over 12. Now we're in the positives, so that's our first positive. And then we're gonna add that 24 pi over 12 one more time, and then that's going to, or if we added it one more time, that would get us farther in the positive direction, I meant to say. So what we're going to do is we're gonna subtract it, okay? So we're gonna subtract a 24 pi over 12 so we can get a new positive number and a new negative number, and that will get us to a negative 37 pi over 12. It is really important to understand that there is an infinite number of coterminal angles, positive and negative. We can keep rotating in positive directions or in negative directions and go on and on and on. So these answers are really just two of an infinite number of answers for us. 
okay? Um, I guess the last thing that I will throw in is remember you could take these referencing or take these coterminal angles and if you sketch these out, they should always land in that same place.